Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on a Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game that you see right now. It's called Supernatural and it's written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know it as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Okay, back with part three. And uh, again, uh, an interesting one. Uh, you're looking at the uh, commented uh, source for part three. I've, I've already added my comments. Um, I'll go through what's changed. Scrolling down, um, we have the screen color RAM. We had that already the last time. Um, if Georg is watching, by the way, if I select a line, oh, hey, I, I select a line, I, I'm not getting the last character. I am getting it here, though. Strange. Uh, anyway, the sprite pointer base. Now, this uh, begs some, um, some explanation. Um, remember, there's a part in memory where... Uh, everything that you see on the on the screen uh, is there, like you poke something into that bit of memory and it and it appears on the screen, right? Uh, we'll call it the video matrix, or uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, not sure what we call it. Anyway, it's a one k block of of data. It's actually uh, one byte per screen location, which is uh, uh, 40, uh, 40 characters on each line and 25 lines. So that's 25 times, uh, 40, uh, and, and that's a thousand, but one K is 24, uh, 1024 bytes. So we have 24 bytes at the end of that screen memory that is not being shown. And it's, it's basically unused. Now, of this, uh, these 24 bytes, the last eight are our sprite pointers. These are numbers telling the VIC chip where to look in VIC memory for the sprite shapes. Now, the Commodore 64 knows of eight sprites, sprites number 027. So any number that I write in this table of eight bytes you know, the, the first number being for sprite 0. If I multiply that by 64, it points to the memory location where the sprite data is to be found. So if you start from, I mean, I did the math on a, on a little bit of paper, but if you start from the screen character data, that's the start of memory, you have, um, and I'm looking at my piece of paper, you have a thousand bytes, and after that, there are 24 bytes that you um, uh, that are unused. Now, and the and the last of those 24, the last eight of those are your sprite pointer table. So if you take 24 and subtract eight, you are left with 16. So if you want to, if you wanted to calculate the start of where the sprite pointer base is, you know, where the sprite pointer base is, you add 1,016 to the the screen character memory, which is what, what is done here. So we have, you know, a lot of calculation and some knowledge of how the sprites work, and you get to this. So the sprite pointer base is that. Remember that. Now there's a number of sprites divided by four. I'll get to this later. Why do we want to have uh, four sprites or a multiple of four sprites? Um, what we have to know uh, also is that each sprite is defined by 21 times three bytes. That's the way it's always been in the Commodore 64. If you want to define the, the, the shape of a sprite, 
it's you have three bytes per line and there's 21 line so 21 lines times 3 is 63 bytes so because everything in the commodore is is 8 bytes and 16 and 32 and 64 you're stuck with one byte at the end of each uh, sprite definition uh, sprite shape definition so this sprite base is 64 we're going to use that uh, in here uh, because you know what happens the numbers that are in here uh, and I'm pointing at the sprite pointer table again it's it's like a little row of numbers and each number is multiplied by 64 to give you the place in Vic memory where uh, to find our uh, sprite shapes so as an example sprite number zero is um, has its uh, sprite pointer uh, set to 64 um, if you multiply 64 by 64 you get I, I just remember that I have I, I have this explained uh, further down in the code 64 times 64 is uh, 1000 in 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 hexadecimal right so we can add that comment here by the way 64 which is given here times the 64 that is given in the reference manual is this number we shouldn't add the this is this number that is added to the base of where the Vic is looking now in in uh, uh, step one we we found that the Vic is looking at the memory starting from that location so if we add this we end up with this so this is where our sprite data is going to be now this is where the alarm bells should be going off because this is the memory bit where all the Vic uh, two registers are so uh, <laughs> but we'll get into that so this is a bit of sprite mathematics just remember that we have the sprite pointer uh, you don't have to remember this you just have to you know it's just me uh, uh, rehashing this stuff because it's it's been <laughs> it's been so long for me as well so we have the sprite pointer base we know where they are. This is a, a neat trick to calculate the start of it. Uh, this I'm not sure about yet. We take 64. I know that. But this is this is to locate the uh, the stuff in memory. So this is you know a definite thing that we have our sprites at this location. We have our characters. Uh, well, our, our characters, we should, should I add this as a comment as well? Let's do that. Our characters are starting at this location. So that's all at the end of memory. Sprites there, characters there. Now this is a, this is an important bit of information that we should remember. Now none of this has changed. None of this has changed. As you can see, it's it's reverted back to the um, uh, to the original form that Georg uh, put it in. Uh, I do upload my commented versions to GitHub, uh, but the comments are per step and they revert back. So that's just what we have to live with. Um, now, something uh, so I've I've learned something new here. Right, we set the interrupt flag, yes, because we're going to map out the um, uh, the kernel and all the stuff that's there. Now, here is something that I was surprised by. I'm I'm using a book as a reference called "Mapping the Commodore 64" by Sheldon Lehman. Now, Sheldon, um, uh, he basically just started with the um, with the Commodore reference guide 
and copied some of the information that is there, including the way these three bits work. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, some memory addresses in the Commodore 64 are I.O. mapped, the really registers, ways of speaking to, uh, to a chip. Um, but uh, memory addresses 0 and 1, and especially 1, uh, they are special. These uh, map to uh, an I.O. register in the CPU itself. The 6510 CPU which was modeled after the 6502, had this added. This is, this is a, a 6510 specific thing, I'm assuming. I, I'm not sure, but I, I, I think this, is act, this was added to the 6510 specific, for the specific purpose of uh, uh, remapping memory. Now, if you read the, the mapping, uh, the Commodore 64 book, you will learn that this is low RAM, which is for mapping out the basic. This is high RAM for mapping out uh, the kernel. And this chooses between switching in the character ROM uh, or the, the VIC uh, I.O. map. But what it doesn't say is that if you turn these both to zero, that the area from this location on is RAM as well. This, this, what these two bits, you turn them both to zero, you've got 64K of RAM. Now, all sorts of stuff can go wrong because, you know, there's uh, like uh, timer interrupts running, so you have to switch them off. You know, at the moment that you execute this command and you haven't done this, then your computer is going to crash. But we've done that. We you know we've set the interrupt flag. We've made everything RAM, and we start copying our character set, which is what we looked at in step two. And now we're going to set up our zero page pointer one to point at our new sprite data. Yes, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. We have sprite data added. So the sprites they point to uh, this binary. Of course, Georg was uh, nice enough to program a little sprite editor uh, to make sprites, yay. And that thing just exports uh, binary sprite data. And we call a function called copy sprites. All the while, we, we have nothing but RAM. So we're accessing the RAM under the I.O. map under the character generator ROM. Okay, that's good to know. Copy sprites. Let's go to copy sprites. You know, scrolling down to that function. I, could we? I'm just testing the... Uh, I haven't done this yet. And uh, Scrolling back up, copy sprites. Can I right-click and go to declaration? Poof! <laughs> Great! <laughs> Epic! That's <laughs> That's good. Yay, can I go back? Probably not. Go to declaration? No, no. Okay, anyway, copy sprites. This is another copy routine. Now, you might say, hey, why didn't he use the other one? Because that was, uh, that was a smart and elegant one. This one is shorter, purpose-built for copying blocks of 256. Uh, yep, 256 bytes. Sorry, I just had a little moment there. Um, and this is where the uh, where the four sprites come in. Four times four is two hundred and fifty six. So that is exactly what we need to let uh, the Y register tick over once. You know, it, it makes for for a very easy routine. And look at what he does here. He chooses this address. I'm going to add a comment here. So copy to this address, which is RAM at this moment in time. Now, that means that the VIC, because that's what we're doing, right? We're copying this into RAM. 
that the VIC is going to be able to look at. We, in our CPU program, are not going... If You know, when we switch back to our normal mode where the kernel is there and, and all, the, all the VIC registers are there, which we are going to need for our game, the VIC chip is going to be able to look at this RAM to get the sprite data. So we're, we're like double, uh, doubling the use of that uh, address space, which is good, you know, this is uh, nice. What I don't particularly like is the fact that he uses uh, hexadecimal here, then decimal again here, then hexadecimal there again. I, I don't like that, but okay. This is the two address. Now what happens here, we load from uh, this pointer and we store it in that pointer, so we copy from one place to the other. We just increase Y until it hits zero. That means that it's done that 256 times, which is, you know, remember, um, uh, four sprites, four times 64 bytes. Um, after we've done that, we increase X. That's just a counter of how many times we've done that. Because uh, Y is ticked over, we have to uh, change to uh, the next page in memory. And then we compare X to the number of sprites divided by 4. We're just copying sprites by the 4 uh, because it's easier. If we've, and we've, we've divided the number of sprites that we have, which is basically 1. We've divided it by 4. Uh, so we, we just say this number is 1. And we, uh, uh, we compare X to 0. If it's not 0... Then we do this again uh, for the next four, but in the in our case we just have one. You know we compare uh, x to one and it's one, and we stop and we jump back to scrolling up to the place where we were called, which is uh, here. Copy sprites. We jump back here, and the first thing we do is we. Uh, we uh, we reset the memory to the way it was when we started the Commodore. So we ha we actually have uh, a basic again, and we actually have uh, uh, the kernel and everything again. All right. So um, da di da di da. Uh, we clear the interrupt flag here, so we st we start our interrupts again, which is fine. The only thing basically that's doing is reading the keyboard. Uh, and uh, uh, updating a timer, There's not much going on. We write hello to the screen, we set the color, we already saw that. Now, we set the position of sprite zero. This number, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna double double check, yep. This number, oh, I've already done that, is D000. Now, you know, the to the untrained eye, this will look like um, the place that we've just copied the sprite shapes to. Uh, but that was in the RAM underneath. We've now switched back. Now we have the VIC. The CPU sees the VIC registers here again. And this value holds the X position for our first sprite. And this is the Y position for our first sprite. So this really... You know, you have to know how the Commodore works to understand this. Um, we still have to tell the VIC where to find our sprite data. So we load the sprite, the sprite player value, which was 64, and we write that into the sprite pointer base. The sprite pointer base, you know, the first value that is there is just the sprite pointer for sprite number zero. Then the VIC will multiply 64 by 64, coming to this. It will then look at, hey, what was my base address? It was that. Um, and it will add the, the result of what we just uh, calculated, and it will come up with this. To the VIC, that address will be the RAM, and it will read uh, the sprite shapes there. So this D000 has a different meaning than this one. The way this works underwater, uh, my friend uh, Hans uh, Biwak 
he explained to me that the VIC actually has a 14-bit address bus. With 14 bits, you can address 16K of memory. That leaves two bits. Now, the two bits that are missing are actually, I believe, the ones uh, that we just saw in address number one. They are mixed in with that address bus determining where the VIC is looking in memory. So it's a very clever way. Hans can, can explain that better than I can, but this is, uh, this is the, the software result of that. And then all we have to do is enable sprite number one. So there's a register, DO15. You know, you can just turn sprites on and off. Remember, the first thing that we did was uh, uh, disable all sprites. This is actually... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Binary, or just one. Did I do that correctly? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So we're we're setting the first bit, which corresponds to bit number uh, sprite number zero, and we're turning it on. The rest are all off. I'm scrolling back up to the first thing that our program does and it's this calculation is the same it's do15 and this is just one two three four five six seven and that's the eighth one this is just zero so there the bit is off and now i'm scrolling down scrolling down scrolling down back to where we were and here we're turning it on and this is our our main game loop. We wait frame, we game loop, and we increase the um, the thingy bob running. Hey, and there it is. 100, 100, the sprite that Georg has drawn. And that's it. Our characters are still there, and we're reading from the RAM under the ROM, and it's all magic. It's Commodore 64 magic. So... Uh, scrolling through this code, uh, this is uh, it, it's it's already quite a bit. Scrolling up, all the way to the top, and that's it. I'm gonna save this. Oh, I've already done that. And uh, well, I'm I'm gonna bid you a farewell. This is uh, this was step three. Uh, I can't wait to get into step four. I think in step four we start uh, reading the joystick and we're gonna move our sprite around. Yay! Thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time. Bye-bye.